So this Saturday at 6 o'clock, the Philadelphia 76ers will host the Toronto Raptors in game one of the NBA playoffs. But here's my question. Who y'all got? This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. And today, I want to talk about this matchup a little deeper by going over the season series, but also breaking down starting five for the Raptors and starting five for the Sixers, what they did versus the NBA compared to what they did versus each respected team. Now, before we get into it, help your boy out and hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and ding that notification bell so you know when these videos drop. We will be live for the live play-by-play for every single Sixers and Raptors game, good or bad. Now, let me give a quick shout-out to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Use promo code PhillyMike for 20% off and free shipping. And yes, Toronto fans, you could do it too. Manscaped is the best for keeping today's man groomed. Just go to manscaped.com, get what you want, and use promo code PhillyMike. Now, let's start with this season series. Yes, the Raptors have owned us. In the regular season, four games, they won three, we won one. Now, there's some context to it. Harden only played two games. Joel missed a game. You know, there's a lot of injuries on the Sixers side, but same with the Raptors. Fred Van Vliet only played one out of four. Uh, I think Pascal missed one game, OG and Anobi. So there's context to say, well, look at this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. It doesn't matter. In the playoffs, we are going to be healthy. Fred Van Vliet, OG and Anobi will play. Joel Embiid, Harden, Maxi, Tobias will play. Now, we do know the Matisse Thibault news, news, and we'll get into that a little bit, and I will give you my prediction at the end. But again, they're five versus our five. I want to really break that down, and it starts with the team. So in the four games, when you combine them, the Raptors have beat us by an average score of three points, 109 to 106. Actually, 106.3, so 2.7. To be exact, that's close. Again, there's context and who was missing here, who was missing there, right? But Nick Nurse and Doc Rivers were both there. And that is one thing the Raptors 100% have the advantage in. They got the better coach. They got a coach that really can adjust as this series goes on. He can adjust as quarters go on. And we're going to have to beat that with the star power of Joel Embiid. And maybe... James Harden, if we get the right James Harden. But now look at the shooting percentages. It's weird. Raptors won three, Sixers won one. But we shot 2% better throughout the whole four-game series. It's because of coaching and closing. And I do believe in the fourth quarter, Joel Embiid's going to have to be him if we have a chance to fully do what I believe we can do. Now, let's go over to the Sixers first. And I want to look at what the Sixers starters do versus the NBA. And the Sixers starters do points per game wise versus the Toronto Raptors. Now, again, there's context because some people played two games, some people played four games. Sample sizes are a little different, but it, you can get a general consensus. Now, again, the starting five is big because that is who's going to take you to the next round. The bench play is always limited in the playoffs. And Although the Raptors' bench is deeper, they got Precious Achua now, who's going to slide to the bench. He gave us problems in these last two matchups. I'll talk about that. And what are they going to do with, um, who is it? No, nah, not, not, Precious Achua is their main person. I want to see how his role is off the bench. Chris Boucher is the other one that I wanted to touch on. But let's look at this. James Harden versus the NBA, 22 points per game against the Raptors, 19.3. He comes down a little bit. Tyrese Maxey. Versus the NBA is 17.5. He goes up to 19.8. That's almost 20 points per game. And Maxie's going to be big. If the Sixers do what I believe they can do, he's going to have to be two or three every night when it comes to scoring. I'm not saying Tobias can't step up, but he hasn't proved it to me yet. And it's unfair to put Maxie in this position, but he's going to have to be in this position. It's up to Doc Rivers to realize, okay, I know I got Tobias. I know I got Harden and Joel Embiid. But I got to stop waiting to the third quarter to involve Maxi. 
He's a part of this offense, a big part, and we got to continue to use him. Now, Danny Green filling in for, to, uh, for Matisse Thybul. Throughout the NBA season, he averaged 5.9 points per game. Against the Raptors, 9 points per game, and it's because how the Raptors play us. They clog the hole. They don't want Embiid to get there. They don't want Harden to get there. So Danny Green will have so many open threes. He is bigger than a lot of people think in this series, and I hope he comes to play. Now, when you look at Tobias Harris, up and down year, 17.2 points per game throughout the whole NBA season. But when he plays the Raptors, he shrinks down to 12.8. Why? Because he's a really iffy three-point shooter, and what the Raptors do is they clog the paint, and Tobias Harris can get stagnant. He can just watch Harden do him, watch MB do him, and kind of even watch Maxi. He's not willing to go down here and work in the paint, and he's going to have to do that. The mid-range is a big part of Tobias's game, and he's going to have to do that if we win this series. And last but not least, Joel Embiid, scoring champ, 30.6 points per game, but he does drop down a little bit to 29 points per game, and it's because of all the attention that Nick Nurse and the Raptors throw his way. Listen, big guy. You got to be the MVP we know you can be. We're going to have to bump that up to 35 points per game in this series, especially if Harden and Tobias let us down. And I'm not saying it will because we'll break down some film probably Friday or Thursday, and there's things that Harden can do. He just got to be aggressive and do it, and we'll go over that. But now let's flip over to the Raptors real quick. The Raptors, same thing. Context, some of them played one, three, four. We'll see. I can't quote each one. But Fred Van Vliet, I know, only played this one time, and he went off. And although he can create problems for the Sixers, Pascal Siakam is the guy we got to watch. We'll get to that. But Fred Van Vliet versus the NBA is 20.3 points per game. The one game he played against the Sixers, he dropped 32 on our heads. We're going to have to rotate. Harden, Maxi, you got to rotate and defend Fred Van Vliet. Gary Trent Jr. averaging 18.3 points per game versus the NBA averaging 19.5 versus the Sixers. So close, but he does ramp it up. We got to stop that. He dropped 30 on our head the last time we played. He is a sniper. He he has a mid-range. A lot of these three-point shooters nowadays don't like to come down and shoot that mid-range, and he does, which keeps the defense balanced. You got to be aware of that. Now look at OG Ananobi, a guy who wasn't there last game. He averages 17.1 points per game throughout the season. But when he plays the Sixers, he averages 20 points per game. Again, he's a guy who can knock down a three ball. He's very versatile, can play defense, and he can get in the paint. Scotty Barnes, a guy I think should be mentioned for rookie of the year, right? Cade Cunningham, a lot of great rookies. But Scotty Barnes, you know, he, he flashes a little bit like Kawhi Leonard at times when you watch him throughout the totality of the season, which I caught some of the things he's done. Uh, he averages 15.3 points per game uh, against the NBA and only 13 against the Sixers, and that's because we're big, we're long. You look at what MB can do, and, and right now Scotty Barnes wants to score most of his points inside the paint. He's trying to develop that 15-footer, the three-pointer. Uh, that will come in time, but not this year. Sorry, Toronto Raptors. And last but not least, Pascal Siakam, a guy who some people outside of Toronto says he's not that good, but Toronto Raptor fans call him Spicy P, and when he plays the Sixers, he is Spicy P, 22.8 points per game. But when he plays the Sixers, 30.3. This man goes from an average NBA, an average scorer to one of the best scorers in the NBA when he plays the Sixers, and that's because we don't got the bodies to throw at him, right? Tobias, not quick enough. Danny Green, not tall enough. Embiid. We can't ask him to come out to the perimeter and guard him uh, 24-7 because we need a rim protector because they got Scotty Barnes, OG Nananobi, Precious Achua. These guys crash the board. And although Chris Boucher can shoot threes, he can get down low and do what he got to do too. So you need MB to protect the rim. And Pascal is just very versatile, slick, athletic, agile. He got the elbow jumper. He got the three. Even though I'd rather him shoot three, then going in and hit us with the hook shot and whatnot. So he's a very versatile player. We're going to have to throw multiple bodies on him, especially when Matisse is not there. But I still think the best player to guard him is Tobias. Now, I did say Tobias is too, too, too slow. I meant to say George Niang. Niang's too slow. Danny's too small. And B can't come out there. And Tobias won't stop him. But he's the 
probably the best body to throw on him, especially if he's only averaging 12.8 points per game. But then use all your energy on the defense. Simple and plain. I think this matchup is going to be close. I think if it goes to seven, watch out, Sixers. If it goes to seven, watch out, Sixers. I'm picking the Sixers to win in six. Six for the Sixers. No pun intended. Um, Again, this single series, a season series, has a lot of context in it. I think all that gets thrown away. Transition slows down. You know, foul calls are different. You know, if the Sixers really want to exploit the Raptors, they got to play bully ball. Embiid, I mean, they got, the, the Raptors got a lot of athletic guys to throw, but they're all 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, Joel Embiid's 7 plus. Once he gets deep, there's no stopping him. So you're going to have to really do what Joel Embiid sometimes don't like to do. He likes to play on the perimeter, shoot free throw, shoot jump shots, shoot threes. He doesn't like to bang all day, and that's going to give us an advantage if he does that. Again, when you look at the bench, Raptors win. We got to limit our bench, but we'll need some big shots from George Niang, Shake Milton, and whoever the backup center is. And I do believe Doc is going to play Paul Reed just because he kind of spoke himself in that corner. We'll see come Saturday at 6 o'clock. But again, this is going to be the toughest first round we had in a while, right? We're talking about the process, right? Miami Heat in the first round. Washington Wizards in the first round. Miami Heat again in the first round. Brooklyn Nets in the first round, back when it was D'Angelo Russell and, and, and Jared Dudley. This is the toughest first-round opponent the Sixers have faced since we've been going to the playoffs. And the crazy thing is, we beat up on the Nets. Easy. We beat up on the Heat. Easy. We beat up on the Wizards. Easy. But we lost to the Hawks. We lost to the Celtics. We lost to the Celtics. We lost to the Toronto Raptors. The quadruple bounce. All in the second round. This matchup is second round worthy, right? The Raptors are equivalent to the Celtics that beat us, the Hawks that beat us, the Raptors that beat us. These guys are they're not equivalent to them because they went on and won the championship. But these this is a tough challenge. But if the Sixers are better, I think this Sixers team still is better than what we saw last year. And so by that saying, we got to win. Harden, a lot's right on you. You don't have to shoot crazy. Just if you're making them, go ahead and do it. If you're not, slow down. Efficiency is important, and you playing in the fourth quarter is important. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section on this whole matchup. Again, I think Harden is going to be more passive, but it's going to pay dividends. I think it's going to keep this offense balanced, and he'll pick his points as one to score. Joel and be going to be him. But again, Tyrese Maxey has to be involved in the game plan and big or Tobias, please. Average more than 12.8. You get paid 40 plus million. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Sixer Nation, Raptor Nation. If you got something to say, let me know as well. It's going to be a tough match. One of my guys that I talk to outside of YouTube, outside of Twitter, you know, one of my people from my house, from my home, in over here, close to Philly, is a Raptor fan. And uh, it's going to be interesting. I still got the Sixers winning. I'll see you on the live play-by-play. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. We out.